So I have the privilege of not only being here today to talk to you about some, one of my favorite topics, I also have the privilege of working at Ericsson headquarters. And that means that you can interpret what I say in two different ways. You can either believe it or you can do it the other way around, if following the, the, the lessons from the history at least in that point. So we have some slides there as well. So, so I, will, I will share with you during some 15, 20 minutes a work that we have been doing in, in looking into how we see that ICT is contributing to the, should I say, uh, sound development of cities. And, and uh, we call that work, so I work with this one, is that so? We call that work the, the, the city index. And, and, and obviously, I think, I won't spend too much time in talking about urbanization. I think we are all aware of that urbanization is sort of one of the really big mega trends that is, is set to drive uh, our societies uh, for the next uh, coming decades or so. The estimates talks about 70% of the world's population living in cities by 2030, uh, or 2040 maybe. Uh, it's, uh, there are some different figures on that. But, but I think that that is in itself is not necessarily so, so a big change, because that's basically what we have in Europe and US. Uh, we are roughly at the same levels of 70% of uh, uh, urbanization. So the, the majority of change is happening, obviously, in, in, in China. I think 40% of urbanization is going to happen in China alone. Uh, India, other parts of uh, developing economies is the places that's really sort of the big change is going to happen. But I think the key thing for looking at urbanization in addition to that is that cities is really sort of the, the, the driver of society progress. I think that's lots of studies that, that prove that cities are more productive at the same time as they are more efficient. So, so cities is, is really a part of the solution in terms of how we're going to evolve our societies. But on the other hand, we also know that there are in cities that some of the biggest problems are being created. Uh, and I think that's where we, at least from, from, from Ericsson, then see a strong link and an increasingly strong link between ICT as one of the key enablers in, in dealing with this, these issues. Uh, so, so I think that's the, sort of the, a bit of the rationale. And if we look at that, I mean, as a part of the preparation for this work, we, we did some, shall I say, research of, of ongoing or, or established knowledge and insights in relation to, to the issue of ICT and how ICT contributes to, to urban development, but also to, to triple bottom line development, meaning social, economic, and environmental development, broadly speaking. Uh, and I think we went through some, some hundred plus reports, and, and there are numerous evidence, either in, in specific project reports or more broader research that, that indicates the, the strong relationship. And I mean, one of the, of the, of the fact pieces that we were able to, to extract out of this is that one 10 percentage points increase of broadband penetration provides a sustainable economic development or economic contribution of 1% of GDP growth. Uh, over time. So, so, so ICT clearly contributes in the economic dimension. I think at the social dimension, we, we all know from our everyday life experiences that ICT contributes. It's, it's not sort of a completely white picture. There are some elements of stress, some elements of, of annoyance with, with ICT, but generally speaking, it contributes to strengthen the social uh, connections and the, uh, the social, show, social bands. And I think increasingly important and going forward, we also see ICT as one of the key enablers to, to sort of continue to develop the social economic benefits and creating a deconnection between the environment, uh, increasing environmental load that you typically get as economies grow. Uh, so to create alternative measures. And in emerging countries, that would mean leapfrogging into new kind of solutions directly, like mobile money, for instance, not having to build up a network of banks or whatever. Uh, and in our economies, I think it's more a matter of, of, of dealing with the transition. So, so there are strong and very both sort of qualitative as well as quantitative evidence that ICT plays a, a strong role today, but an increasing role going forward. Uh, so for that purpose, we then decided to, as one of the pieces that we are looking into, and, and, and that's part of my, my task then at Ericsson, to, to have a future perspective and also look into more of how society is evolving and how our technology is contributing to that development than necessarily the core uh, capabilities of the technology itself. Uh, so therefore, we, we decided, let's see if we can find an intelligence way, intelligent way to map the urban development uh, with the, the maturity of ICT and see if we can sort of, yeah, first of all, find the metrics to do it, and then secondly, what are the patterns that you can learn from there? Because we, we believe that there is some, some interesting insights that can be created. And we also said that let's focus on cities, partly from the urbanization point of view, but partly also from a comparison point of view, that when you, when you look into countries, the, the picture becomes blurrier. 
My favorite example is comparing London and Shanghai. It probably makes some relevance already today, and going forward it makes increasingly relevance. But comparing UK with China, uh, that's a little bit, it's not really fruits. It's, it's something completely different that you are comparing. So, so we believe that the city as a context is something which is increasingly important and, and where we can speed up learning, which is one of our, our uh, objectives when doing this. Uh, so, so, so we set then the city as the, as the target, but of course, and I will not go into the challenges of designing index, I'm happy to take that afterwards if anybody is dealing with those issues, but obviously countries are pretty well defined from a statistical point of view, that's the benefits and the beauty of countries, cities are generally speaking not defined from a statistical point of view, so you run into all kinds of issues when you deal with this. So we, we have done some experience on that which we're also happy to share, but that's beyond the topic of today then really. Uh, so. so just to give you a, a, a short sort of picture, what are we talking about? Before I sort of position Stockholm, I think that most of you have captured that Stockholm is quite well off in this, in this uh, uh, piece of work that we've been doing. But we are then capturing, as we say, the triple bottom line, where we are looking at, at the social dimension of, of, of urban development, the economic dimension of urban development, as well as environmental dimension. And when we talk about so, social dimension, we are particularly looking into health, we are looking into to education, and we are also looking into inclusion as, as three key areas where, which is generally attributed to social development and where we also see this link with ICT from the basic research that we've been doing. So, so we, we see that there is some, some level of relationship, uh, correlation, maybe, causality, that's something which I think scientific, scientific people can, can discuss then. Uh, in the economic dimension, we looked into the productivity uh, how productive is a given city today, from an economic point of view. And we also looked into the competitive dimension, where we were more looking at wh what are the signs of a future competitiveness, the future productivity. Uh, more looking into the human capital, looking into intellectual capital, looking into education, uh, higher education levels, etc. And then also from an environmental point of view, we looked into sort of the resource efficiency, uh, what are the degree of, 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 of reusing materials, etc. We looked into pollution levels, uh, and we also looked into the, to the climate change aspect, pr primarily captured by transportation and energy sector. And in total, I think in this area, we have some 20 different measuring points which we are capturing them for each of the city. And, and here, just as a final remark, our intention was not to sort of do inventions in, in triple bottom line. I think that this is a little beyond the core competences of our company. But, but as I said in the beginning, we want to sort of make sure that we have that understanding of how our technology plays in these dimensions. And we see this increasingly important in, in the future. Uh, so if we look then into to, uh, the ICT dimension, which is a little bit closer to our heart, and where I think that typically players like us have spent most of their energy in discussing new generations of technology, speeds, bandwidth, uh, subscribers, etc. Uh, and obviously we, we are capturing that. So, so we talked about an ICT maturity in which we are both looking at the infrastructure itself in terms of the quality and the, the sort of the, 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 shall I say, the availability in terms of how, how present is the infrastructure in a given city then. Uh, then we also looked into the affordability. I think that resonates a lot with, with your talks about <laughs> how efficient is the market in providing these services basically. And the third aspect is actually how, how savvy are the users, are people on the streets or, or in the city to actually take advantage of the, of the, of the infrastructure. And there we look both at individual as well as uh, public and, 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 and business usage. So with these parameters then in, in, at hand, uh, I'll go very soon. So with these parameters at hand, we then were able to put together an index picture. I, I brought with me just a couple of, of data points here to, to uh, to highlight, as we are talking about fibers today, fiber today, I, I thought that broadband quality was something that, that could be quite interesting. And we are measuring both the mobile broadband quality as well as the fixed broadband quality. We're also measuring the subscriptions, so the, the, so I said, availability uh, of, the, of the infrastructure. But this is primarily looking at the broadband quality. And you can see that uh, as an aggregation of mobile and fixed Stockholm ends up at fourth place. And it's the mobile that, that, that reduces the, the, the grading. Uh, while Copenhagen uh, actually takes the first place, if we look at just these data points, driven very much by the mobile uh, performance of the mobile network. Uh, but actually, it's, it's what you say, mål uh, when, when you talk about uh, this kind of, it's, it's very sort of close between the, the, the top cities. And if we look at the fixed broadband, it's, it's really only uh, Hong Kong, Taipei, which are uh, above, and then Singapore maybe on the same level as Stockholm, looking, looking at the chart here. Uh, so in this part of the world, Stockholm is clearly performing the best on, on, the, on the 
uh, fixed uh, Robin quality parameter here. But it's a very close, close game then, of course. Uh, another aspect, when we talk about usage, we were looking into, because we wanted to, to capture a little bit of the, of the front-end uh, aspects of usage. Uh, we took away some of the old, we, we actually took away the fixed telephony, as we believe that that's not really a, a sort of a leading edge indicator. But we, we looked into, on the other hand, into open data as being sort of the means to provide an efficient way for a given city to communicate with the entrepreneurs and the, the crazy minds that we talked about that can take advantage of this information and build it into applications or create new kind of services on top of that, uh, which we believe is, is one indicator of, of, of progression and maturity in a city, whether that information is available. I mean, there are cities which have basically no data at all provided. And then you have all the range up to, to, to cities which are very focused on developing or providing this information with APIs and also providing dynamic data so you can get a lot of sort of very exciting information on which you then can sort of innovate. And, and the, the ranking, we, we actually graded cities then by a five grade scale like this because there is not sort of a, a single value that you can calculate. And basically, I think also here Stockholm rates, uh, rates very high in terms of making sure that we increasingly focus on, on, on providing the capabilities of the infrastructure, the capabilities of this broader ICT infrastructure into a, a, a public use which goes beyond the specific uh, cases where, where, where the, the sort of the infrastructure is implemented. Uh, and there's yet other, other use case, usage aspects. But um, if we then add these two together, so I mean the, the, the ICT maturity dimension with the triple bottom line performance, that's when we get this picture uh, which, which is basically a rating between 30, 31 cities as we had along with us here, and I think we need to remember that we are, we are rating 31 cities. So when we say that Dhaka is number 31, we're not saying that you have, then you have rest of the world cities behind Dhaka from a, from a sort of performance point of view. Out of these 31, Dhaka is, is, is the 31, so to speak. There's actually quite a funny story around Dhaka, because when we first published this, I got a call from the, from the local office in, 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 uh, in um, Pakistan, no, the Bangladesh, sorry, uh, and telling me that you have to take Dhaka away. We can't have Dhaka at the bottom place. Okay, why, why, why can't that be? And the way they discussed it a bit. And we decided after some discussion to publish it anyway. And a week later they called back again and said, oh, we're so happy because the, the government was super happy to be on this prominent list of cities. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the interpretation of things is not what you, what you always think. So, so. And our idea is not, not necessarily to point fingers in that sense, but our idea is to trigger discussion, which I think we've done in many cases. But looking at this list, I mean, Stockholm is the city that ranks number one, and, and, and followed by London and Singapore, uh, Paris, and then we have Copenhagen, Oslo. We added some, some additional Scandinavian cities here also to, to sort of make sure that we have a good grip over the situation. Then. And, and I think that it's, it's due to a number of factors. Obviously, the, the, the focus on and I think the, the history lesson basically gives us a very big reason for this. It goes back very long, long in time. It's, this is not a quick fix which you can make from one year to another. So there has been a very strong focus on developing an, an ICT infrastructure, but also providing that uh, by chance or by, by, by constructive thinking or by, by visionary thinking, I don't know, but to make sure that that is provided to, to citizens in a good way. So, so it actually then performs quite well from, from a triple bottom line perspective. And if we, if we look at sort of a broad statement here around, if we look at sort of the, the, the lower cities on the ranking here, I think that, that we, can, we can clearly see that there is efforts that needs to be made in many cases on the digital divide to make sure that this infrastructure becomes in the hands of everybody, basically. And, and it's a, it's a literal, literacy point of view as well as a efficiency and availability of infrastructure. But it also goes down and into sort of making sure that ICT is integrated into particularly administration and those areas where the city can control, control themselves. How much time do I have? I, I must have looked. Thank you. Uh, and then if we look at the middle cities, there I think it's more about creating a focus on some of the key urban challenges. And of course that varies between cities and make sure that we can, can leapfrog in progress in there. And here, when we talk about mature cities like Stockholm, I think it's very much about making sure that we can manage the transition into a, a, a sort of a, a much broader use of ICT, where ICT becomes integrated into a whole range of activities in society. And I will dwell a little bit more on that. If we look at factors of success, I mean, what is it that makes cities come up in this corner? I think commitment, leadership, 
is something that, that comes from all parties, uh, but particularly the political. We can see that in, in basically all of those leading cities, ICT has been a part of the vision of how the city should develop. And there have been strong initiatives taken. I mean, Singapore is, is a great example of a city that's been very progressive in this area. But there are other cities that are also very progressive in these areas. Uh, I think that a focus on both infrastructure as well as how that infrastructure is taken care of, building the, the human knowledge, building the, the industries or, or supporting and building the industries that can take advantage of this. Uh, building also individual knowledge, focus very much on, on, on uh, creating both basic capabilities to use ICT as well as to develop the, the, the sort of more scientific view on, 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 on how ICT should go. And then, going back to the previous point here, support innovation to happen. It's very hard to dictate innovation, but to create the, the environment for innovation to happen, I think that's one of the key successes also. Uh, so very briefly, at, at towards the end here, I mean, when we talk about ICT infrastructure, I think that we are at no means at an end point that where we are right now. We see a lot of, of things that is happening in terms of virtualizing networks, simplifying the network architectures, uh, utilizing Opto in basically all aspects of, of transportation and backbone. And I think that's, once again, the place where Stockholm is, is very well positioned to, to, to reap additional benefits then. From our side, obviously, we're looking into 5G, how that is coming. We see 5G as driven by a completely different set of use cases. It's not at all the sort of the personal screen-centric use cases. It's much more how transportation systems, how healthcare, how other industries should be able to have an infrastructure, which is a common infrastructure, which is fit for the different use cases in those industries. So that drives the, uh, a lot. And of course, that also calls for this issue, which could be a very big discussion about open networks, etc., but virtualization networks and be able to provide certain performance uh, guarantees, etc. Uh, we do that on the streets. The ambulance turns on the blue light and that gives some right away. So I think that there are a different kind of, of structures that needs to come into place as this becomes more a critical infrastructure across critical activities in society. And then also analytics in, 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 in many different forms in real time. And I think that the areas we're looking at is, I mean, urban mobility, I think there's going to happen. I mean, urban transport infrastructure is a largely unconnected infrastructure. That is going to be connected and that is going to revolutionize the way in which we solve tra transportation. Add self-driving cars, which to me still is science fiction, but Volvo is putting that on the streets in Gothenburg in 2017 and saying us that it's the legal aspect which is the challenge, not the technology aspects. And we know it's happening all over the place. That is going to happen, backed up with a strong ICT infrastructure that can change the whole system. Smart utilities, e-governance to take, take governance even further, health, uh, but also education. I mean, there's a number of sectors in which we will see ICT becoming more and more integrated. And I think that the answer to how we sort of maintain a position with Stockholm is to be able to look at both these dimensions. How do we stimulate uh, these sectors to transform and, and partly converge with, with other sectors? Because it's not just an efficiency measure, it's a real restructuring of, of industrial system that comes as an effect of this, like we have seen in the media industry. Uh, so I think that, that to, to work on those both angles, the, both the, the, the supply side and how we develop a network which is fit for a much broader usage, as well as how do we stimulate that innovation to happen and the transformation that comes from that, which calls for regulative uh, changes, it calls for incentives to be placed, it calls for technology to be developed, etc. So it calls for, for actions along a whole range of stakeholders. Somebody's looking at me right now. Should I stop? I do that. <laughs> there are some further readings for those interested. Thank you very much, Patrick.